Hello, everybody. It's a pleasure to be here and talk to you about the genomics for understanding rare diseases in the Islands Network, otherwise known as Cardi. As you would rightly appreciate, the pace of genomics has actually accelerated in the last one and a half or decades. And this has largely been possible because the increase in throughput for sequencing nucleotides, what we call as the next generation sequencing technologies, and the consequent reduction in the cost for sequencing. And what would this mean to, to humankind was that we could now afford to la sequence large number of sequences, not just for humans, but also for many other organisms. Now, India has not been far behind in, in, in our ability to sequence human genomes. The country uh, announced that it sequenced the first human genome on the 8th of December 2009, and to this effect, an announcement was made in the Indian parliament by the then Honorable Minister of State for Science and Technology. And this was done as collaboration between the lab Sridhar Shivasubhu and mine, along with two graduate students, Ashok and Ramya, who contributed quite significantly to this program. Now, of course, doing one is important, but even more important is to be able to do many more and also understand the genetic landscape of populations across this part of the world, which is underrepresented in many of the global human genomics initiative. We are fortunate to have been contributing to the first Sri Lankan, the first Malaysian, and also one of the found, being one of the founding members of the Pan-Asian Population Genomics Initiative, also contribute to understanding the genetic landscape of South Asian populations. And very recently, we have also been able to cover the indigen uh, uh, program and cover the Indian population uh, and, and also uh, sort of work together with collaborators across this region uh, to form one of the largest databases for not just of Southeast Asian populations, but also the Middle Eastern populations. Now, one of the obvious applications for looking at genomes and implementing genetics and genomics in the clinical settings is in the area of rare genetic diseases. To put numbers cumulatively, uh, people suffering from rare genetic diseases and traits amount to 70 million people in, in, in India out of the 300 million people worldwide. And one of the significant problems uh, uh, looking at rare genetic diseases is that many of the patients are not aware about these conditions. And in fact, many of the physicians are also not aware about these conditions. And this would, uh, this would mean that they go through multiple rounds of misdiagnosis and a considerable amount of time and resources is lost before even they can get a diagnosis. And even that is available for only a minuscule of the population. So in 2015, we sort of asked this question, what is the real advantage of doing such a program in India? And the real advantage, of course, we, we enumerated that ours being a large population, encompassing almost a sixth of the global population, this would mean that we would have quite diverse genetic ancestries, a very stratified population because of the marriage structure, and more importantly, with a close-knit family structure, this would also become one of the uh, unique populations to understand genetic diseases. So along with my Shri, collaborator, Dr. Sri Shiva Supu, we, we formed this consortium, what we call as Guardian. And the idea of Guardian is that we would work with clinicians who see patients with undiagnosed rare diseases in their clinics. And we would, we would put them through a standardized process of consenting, sample collection, sequencing, and analysis. With the idea that whenever we get a pathogenic genetic mutation, we can go back to the clinician and inform the clinician about the mutation. And over these years, we've actually grown to encompass over 300 clinical collaborators and 70 clinical centers, making, one of, making it one of the largest of its kind of programs in this part of the world and impacting today over 10,000 odd individuals suffering from rare genetic diseases and their families. And this entire program, and was funded by CSIR. In 2019, we have sort of put together this publication with around 280 odd authors, where we have shown that this such a kind of program can actually take collaborations at scale, implement widespread research and education and diagnosis of patients with rare genetic conditions, and more importantly, can seed the implementation of programs in rare genetic diseases, and more importantly, implement policy for rare genetic diseases. And today, fortunately, India has a program and a policy for rare genetic diseases implemented by the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. Now that points and comes back to the pertinent question on what of these diseases 
are really prevalent in the population. Now, typically when we look at prevalence of, or estimates of prevalence of many of these conditions, they come from clinical settings. And as I said before, uh, clinicians are in many ways not very adept at diagnosing many of these conditions. And therefore that would mean that the prevalence estimates for many of these genetic conditions would actually be wrong. Now, how do we really understand the prevalence of these conditions? And one of the opportunities that genomics offers us is that we could allow to look at populations apparently of apparently normal individuals and go back and ask this question, what are the carrier frequencies of many of these genetic alleles which might have contributed to genetic conditions? And if we could understand what are the prevalent genetic conditions, we could go back to clinicians and, uh, and sort of empower them with the right kind of knowledge, right kind of tools, so that they can go back and diagnose many of these patients in the clinics. So to do that, you need to have a background data. And for uh, fortunately, we do have a background data from 2019 as part of the Indigen program for genomics for public health. And this program involves sequencing or sequences of uh, over a thousand odd individuals from cosmopolitan Indian populations. And the idea of this program was, can we understand what really ails India? And this is one of the examples of how this could now be implemented back into understanding rare genetic diseases. And this is from the Government Medical College in Calicut with a collaborator of Gita Goldraj. Uh, the high prevalence of carrier frequencies for many of the primary immunodeficiency conditions prompted us to work with the government and of course the, the medical college to go back and prospectively look at patients suffering from genetic conditions. And this was done in association with the government, which provided treatment to PID patients. We also worked with SCRB uh, as part of a research program to offer genetic support. And a very specialized PID clinic was formed in 2018. And through this program, we have created one of the largest uh, cohorts for primary immunodeficiency condition in this part of the world. Many of the patients are on treatment, supported by the government. A significant number of patients have accessed hematopoietic stem cell transplants, which is a curative therapy for many of these primary immunodeficiency conditions. And many more families have actually accessed genetic counseling and prenatal genetic screening through an accurate molecular diagnosis. So this is also an example to exemplify that many of the diseases that remain undiagnosed or underdiagnosed could actually be brought to light by a sort of a targeted approach, looking at the allele frequency and prevalence estimates from global population scale data that's available. Now, the other important aspect of propagating such a program is education. And education, not just of patients and families, education, not just of clinicians, but also of lay public so that they can all be uh, brought to the same platform. And over the last three years, we have put together a quite elaborate program for, uh, uh, for education through digital platforms. And today, uh, there are over 4,000 participants from 40 countries, making it one of the largest global initiatives in genomic education. So in summary, what we try to work is to work with clinicians across clinical centers, look at population scale genomes to understand the prevalence of genetic diseases, work with clinicians under the program, which is called Guardian, which is Genomics for Understanding Rare Diseases in the Alliance Network. We work with clinicians to educate them through multiple specialized programs, including the Sanofi Genzyme Fellowship Program, instituted by Sanofi Genzyme. And today we offer over 130 high-end genetic tests as part of a clinical service, which is called GOMED, which is uh, uh, run by my colleague, Dr. Mohamed Farooq. And through this process, we also add value to the industry by enabling industry with cost-effective evidence-based uh, diagnostics, which can now roll out into clinics and actually benefit a large number of individuals. And the holy grail of genetic diseases is our ability to, to not just diagnose genetic diseases, but also be able to prevent and treat genetic diseases. And we use a variety of approaches uh, in the lab to, to understand the molecular mechanisms of these diseases and also looking at cues on how to treat such conditions. Thank you very much.